Hello there. It is my very great privilege at this time to be able to present to you in a very few moments one of the outstanding motion pictures of this decade. A saga of such searing passion that it explodes from the screen like a slice of cake. This is the story they said was too uninteresting to be made. A stirring tale of heroism, of courage, and of selfless devotion in the service of the frozen vegetable trade. In this movie, you can see... You can see the, the, the primitive rich ritual of the weekly board meeting. You will thrill to the amazing language of the marketing man. You will watch with wonder the strange unearthly mating ritual of the assistant head of motivational research. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time it gives me much pride and it is with a great deal of sincerity and honor that I now present the Norman Sinjin Stevens and Peggy Mount in Billy Bremner's extraordinary motion picture, The Great Bird's Eye P Relaunch of 1971. On the 19th of February, 1893, the coastline of Scotland was whipped and savaged in one of the worst storms that the hardy, rugged folk of those climes had ever witnessed. The merciless sea and wind lashed the shore in its tiny dwellings for nine unending days. However, our story takes place in Surrey in 1970, which is a bit of a relief as it's much quieter there. In the early months of 1970, in an obscure building in a rather unfashionable part of suburban Surrey, a small group of men met together to plan an operation which, if successful, would change the entire face of the edible pea market as we know it today. These desperate men, dedicated to the destruction of all brands of frozen pea other than their own, the notorious and strangely named Bird's Eye frozen peas, now gathered together at the Bird's Eye Chief's bidding to plan the utter annihilation of all their erstwhile competitors. The atmosphere was tense and expected. Bearing in mind always that other factors deleterious to the continual thriving of this great organization. And I emphasize this, and I, I, I cannot stress this too strong. The changes, small changes perhaps, major changes, probably. But, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest greater changes that we shall see in the forthcoming year. The responsibility for which and in the... Shut up! You great tit. <laughs> Gentlemen, we come to the next item on the agenda, the sales target for bird's IP sales in 1971. I think you've all read the relevant information to help guide us in making this difficult decision. So I now suggest that we fix the sales target in the customary way by drawing it out of a hat. Five percent. The sales target for 1971 is a 5% increase over 1970. Oh, yeah. Oh, that simply means we have to hold our market share while the market itself increases. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Play Bristol Rovers. Ah, yeah. Uh, can we collect our fees now? <laughs> this is a bird's eye salesman who hasn't yet heard that he has to sell even more in 1971. Well, that's it, gentlemen. We've done a good morning's work. Time for lunch, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh? Wait. Good God, who are you? 
I am the comparatively good fairy. The comparatively good fairy? Well, nobody's perfect. Boom, boom, boom. One in a row. And I look after all bird's eye salesmen everywhere and make sure their sales targets are not too high. Well, it's not too high. If you don't improve your product and presentation, it is. It's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It bleeding well is. Now, shut your gob unless you'd like to be turned into a frog. Oh. Don't threaten me, young man. You're barging here, pretending to be a fairy. <coughs> Telling us how to market, please. Oh. Well, you don't scare me, you fraud. You couldn't turn someone into a frog to save your life. <laughs> oh, bucket. Now then, watch it. Yes, comparatively good fairy, but we want to know why our target is too high unless we improve our product and presentation. Ask a marketing man. Good idea, Lord Putty. Mm. Miss Gibbons. Will you send in a marketing man and an interpreter, please? <laughs> Uh, he predicates a euphoric anti-meridian. Oh, a uh, reciprocal extrapolation of matutinal benignity. It says good morning, too. Will you please ask it how we can improve the bird's IP? Yes. Please adumbrate the methodology of product amelioration. Oh, <laughs> postulating a strategy of substantive and non-image USP reformation, assuming constant ABP, extrinsic to a maximization of point of sale realization, increased media activity or in-style promotional usage, instigate an in-depth motivational analysis on the full A to E spectrum with correlated empiric limited placement merchandising. It says, us some housewives. Boom, boom. My Joe, that's a good idea. That's what we'll do then. Right, good, marvelous. When your whole business depends upon pleasing the housewife and convincing her of your quality, and when your continued growth depends upon pleasing her and convincing her even more, then you ask her what she wants. And this is what Birdseye did. In March, they set up a major national inquiry to establish attitudes towards frozen peas. They asked housewives from all over the country, of different social groups, of different income groups, of different ages, of different family circumstances, and so on, and so on, and so on. And they asked each housewife why she liked peas. And do you like that pea? Yes, yes, it's very nice indeed. Is that the right answer? No, no. Couldn't tell it from butter. No, couldn't tell that pea from a dead crab. I couldn't tell that pea from a trip to Hamburg. I couldn't tell that pea from a blow on the head. Mmm, that tasted nice. Must have been bird's eye. Delicious. I like all my peas on the plate to be the same size. Why? Sheer stupidity. I like them the same size because they then create a sense of cosmic harmony. Because they don't frighten me so much. So far, we've found that housewives like their peas graded in size. But what quality did they look for most in their peas? Do they want peas smaller? No! 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 No, no! Why not? Nothing to them! Wind and water! All right, then. Would you like peas sweeter? No! We don't want sugar put in them! What about greener peas, then? No! Don't want colouring like that in tin peas! <coughs> All that dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane and deoxyribose nucleic acid and monosodium glutamate. That's bloody rubbish. All right, then. How do you like your vegetables and peas? Younger. 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 In an hammock, standing up. Younger. Younger. We began to detect one message coming through all these interviews. Housewives wanted their peas. Younger. Shut up! 
Younger. Yes, folks, younger. If peas were younger, they were sweeter, more tender, greener, fresher. The message was, if we picked our peas younger, we'd get the finest that nature could offer. Ah. Well? He requires a response to his interrogative stimulus concerning the experimentation. Oh, empiricism among the relative purchasing community provides evidence for a greater degree of maturation in the product at point of sale. They want younger peas. Boom. Boom. Younger peas? Younger peas, eh?
imagination. But I think it tastes younger. <laughs>